5G menjadi medan tempur baru untuk perusahaan-perusahaan teknologi kelas dunia. Amerika Serikat misalnya melalui Federal Communication Commission baru-baru ini mengumumkan akan menyiapkan dana yang sangat fantastis. 275 miliar dolar Amerika Serikat atau setara dengan nyaris 4000 triliun rupiah untuk mengembangkan teknologi 5G. Amerika Serikat akan bersama dengan Eropa menantang negara-negara yang berasal dari Asia seperti China, Korea Selatan dan juga Taiwan untuk berlomba-lomba menjadi raja teknologi 5G. G di kelas dunia. Secara eksklusif, CNBC Indonesia mendapatkan kesempatan berbincang dengan salah satu perusahaan raksasa penguasa teknologi 5G dunia yang siap masuk ke pasar terbesar di Asia Tenggara, yaitu Indonesia. Lantas seperti apa kesiapan Indonesia di tengah hambatan seperti regulasi, infrastruktur, termasuk juga spektrum frekuensi untuk bersiap menyambut revolusi 5G. Apakah Indonesia cenderung ambisius namun seperti nafsu besar, tenaga kurang? Yang pasti, untuk 5G, Indonesia tidak boleh ketinggalan tren. Sehera FH, Anda menyaksikan Iconomics. Dan saat ini saya sudah bersama dengan Eric Ekoden, Senior Vice President and Group CTO Ericsson Global. Eric, thank you for having us here. Well, thanks for having us here, Hira. Okay, and uh, Eric, you came to Jakarta hmm. now. Why is it now? Well, I think uh, Indonesia, Jakarta is a very important market for Ericsson when it comes to mobile, mobile broadband. Mm -hmm. But I think there is another reason, and that's really the gearing up of the world when it comes to 5G. Uh, 5G mm -hmm. both as a technology as well as mm -hmm. a business opportunity. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think this is, this is very much true here in Indonesia as well. Have you met with uh, some companies in Indonesia and what, what did you propose to them? Yeah, no, so I'm meeting with all our lead customers here, here in, in Indonesia. Uh, what we are talking about is really the maturity of 5G. Uh, Ericsson is a 5G leader globally now in the world and we have all the North American operators, commercial operation of 5G. We have uh, Korea uh, just recently launched commercial operation with 5G with Ericsson gear. So I think part of this is really to, to share best practices but also to realize that 5G is local in the sense that you have to adapt to the local conditions. So going through what we need to do uh, in Indonesia to make sure also Indonesia can capture the benefits of 5G as an innovation platform, that, that's core to us right now. Uh, would you share the company's name with us here that you have met? I'm meeting them, uh, uh, all of them actually, over these two days that I'm here. So, mm -hmm. Uh, but it's, providers it, it, it's, as well. It's the leading operators, yes. Uh, have you met with the regulator as well? Not this time, but I think that's actually a great, great point, uh, Hera, because when we look at 5G readiness around the world, we've matured the technology, the research part, the standardization part, the products are, are now available commercially around the world. What is lacking in many places around the world is really regulatory clarity, spectrum availability, uh, in a timely manner, not at too high price, not uh, sort of stopping the investments, uh, and in some cases also investment climate. And I think this is true also here in Indonesia. It's really important to have uh, early availability of new spectrum for 5G. Yeah. At the same time, 5G is actually this technology that we will use to uh, upgrade the existing frequency bands that have already been allocated by the regulator. So it's a combination, new spectrum and an existing spectrum. So I think we, we need to talk more to the regulators as well. Mm. Uh, when will it will be? When we'll uh, I'm meeting you know, with the, the regulator? Yeah, in my case? Mm. Well, I think this is an ongoing discussion that we have locally here. So th this is happening uh, on a weekly basis because it's such an important part for the whole industry. Getting access to, to Spectrum, that's what we have to do every day. What feedback did you get from the companies that you met in Indonesia? <coughs> well, I would say uh, a few things. One is that there is uh, sort of a very strong uh, interest in, in technology, which is good for me as a CTO, of course. I drive the global agenda when it comes to technology and thought mm -hmm. leadership from Ericsson. Um, but they're also very curious to, to see how does this add to our business? What are the ways to save costs? 
basically lowering the price per gigabyte, which is very mm -hmm. important with mobile broadband. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, they see IoT as a great opportunity. And, and that is the broad use, everything from connecting uh, logistics, transport flows, smart manufacturing, smart cities, uh, all the way to really advanced uh, self-driving cars and, and AR, VR applications. So I think they are interested in this exploration beyond the consumer space. Mm -hmm. We've used to have mobile communication for for smartphones and for, for people. Uh, now I think everyone realizes that 5G is this innovation platform for digitalization of countries. It's, it's actually great to see Indonesia's uh, effort now to, to use 5G as a pillar in the digitalization, mm -hmm. um, making Indonesia uh, 4.0 and, and similar initiatives. And then the third area that they are looking at is really uh, what, um, what can you do with 5G as a vehicle for enterprises, for industry. So it's, it's, it's actually a business opportunity for them. Um, are they talking about uh, the infrastructure in Indonesia and talking about the remote and rural area? Because Indonesia is, uh, is quite unique as a country, you know. Yeah, like all we, the islands. We, ha yeah. uh, we have a lot of rural uh, areas and remote areas. Mm. Are they talking about that as well? For sure, absolutely. And I think uh, the interesting thing with this um, development is that you can leverage the, the global technology. It gives you technology leadership. It gives you the scale, bringing down the cost of devices, the cost of infrastructure. And since we are leading in this technology race, you could say we can we can bring down the cost for, for using global technology. But every country is different, to your point. I mean, you have to adapt it locally. Uh, it has to do with local resiliency mm -hmm. of the network infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It has to do with mm -hmm. uh, providing great uh, service layer uh, levels uh, wherever you are. So I think this is very much a discussion. How can we support both uh, dense areas in the cities as well as, as the rural, rural areas? As emerging markets, uh, don't, uh, do, you talking about, do you talk about the pricing strategy? Not really. I think that that's uh, really for, for our customers to deal with how they are mm -hmm. addressing the market. But what, what we have to, to do, uh, I think, is to make sure that the technology enables the right price. And that means that we have to use technology. Affordable. Affordable, absolutely. And, and that, that means that we're using technology uh, as a vehicle also to drive down costs. Latest technology is, is actually cheaper to operate. And that means that we can automate more. We can take out cost in that way, and the equipment itself, the product, serves many more customers with the same equipment. So we, we lower the cost per gigabyte actually in the coming five years by, by as much as, as a factor of 10, which is really important when it comes to affordability. So this is, this is a key, key discussion. Um, and Eric, 5G is the end of a 4G era. And the new, the new beginning. Yeah, you know, new, new beginning, I, the I like new that. Beginning yeah, but, and but I think... <laughs> <laughs> Revolution is really starting to happen. Yeah. And would you describe how fast the way of life of the human being would be with the 5G technology? Oh, that's a tough one. But I think I have to comment a little bit on the 4G, 5G thing here because mm -hmm. 4G is actually the foundation for 5G. So that's why it's important to have strong 4G build out, strong 4G capabilities. Initially, 4G and 5G will really go hand in hand. They are one and the same system, you could say. So, so we actually see very much uh, the need to have a strong 4G footprint. And then when you go into 5G, the latest technology, you get the bandwidth, maybe 10 times faster than today. 5 10 to times faster. Well, that depends, of course, on, on what, you, what your starting point is. But we're talking about gigabit per second speeds, which is fantastic for video downloads, is for some of the games, but it's also great for enterprises. Uh, the low latency, we're talking about millisecond type latencies mm -hmm. that allows you to use the infrastructure uh, instead of doing local compute, mm -hmm. you, you can actually offload some of the applications from the device onto the network. We call mm -hmm. it the edge network or the edge cloud. And th that capability is new with 5G. So uh, both consumers and enterprises, they will be able to, to get the benefit from the, the speed, the, the low latency, mm -hmm. the uh, lower cost per gigabyte, mm -hmm. all of these mm -hmm. things. Um, that, that's really happening. And it's going to be very fast. Yeah, fast is one, one aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, fast is really one aspect. So downloading of, of videos, uh, perhaps before you're, uh, you're boarding a flight or perhaps uh, just to, to be able to, to watch in an offline mode, all of these things will be, let's say, 10 times faster. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's one aspect. But it's really this interactivity, the fact that it's a very responsive network, highly reliable, very responsive network. That, that's a key aspect with 5G. And that's actually why it's going beyond consumers. Because enterprises, 
industries, manufacturing, transportation, they all require reliable network infrastructure. And that is what 5G brings. Okay, Eric, we're going back and talking about your strategy battling with another competitors. Kami akan kembali saat lagi, masih di economics, sendi Indonesia, beyond business. And that means that now, in the coming years, 2019 is really a big year, 2020 will be a big rollout across the world. And we will take a significant part of that, that market.